Well, it's kind of a long story, but I'm gonna make it as short as possible. Okay. Um, I met a, a, a lady friend okay. and uh, we went through some kind of downhill okay. things okay. that ended up in her losing the apartment, even though uh, I tried everything I could okay. uh, in my power to keep it. And I lost everything I had. And now I'm talking about everything except the clothes that's on my back. I think I met John back in July. Okay. And at that time I was very homeless. Okay. Uh, and I was living under a bridge. Mm -hmm. And um, and that was an experience in itself uh, that is, I wouldn't wish n no one to be in that type of predicament. At first, I just thought they were the usual crowd. You just come out, oh, you know, we'll do this for you and this and that. You know, we're sorry for your situation. Uh, we're here to help you, blah, blah. Because I done heard it, heard it so many times, you know, and people done preached that to me. And, and actually, no action was taken. Okay. And, but John was someone that was different. And I have a gift that, uh, that I can, when I see someone, I can kind of tell uh, whether they're truthful or not, mm -hmm. and, and their intentions are good. Mm -hmm. And John was unique. He was rated high on my rector scale. Okay. <laughs> right. It's it just, it just, because at that time I was really down. Okay. I was down. And, uh, and, 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 and something in him brought hope back into me. Right. He gave me some real encouraging words. And, and, and not promises, but just things that he would like for me to try, you know, to, and, and to assure me that he was gonna be there to help me. You know, it's not gonna be like the, the norm that you hear, you know, people that say that they'll do something and, and do nothing. And, uh, but he was different. John was different. And, and for that, I give him credit for me even being where I am right now, because it wasn't for me meeting John, and I think that was through the grace of our Father in Heaven, uh -huh. um, I would not be in this program, and I probably would not be in this interview as of right now. Well, John, I just, first of all, I just want to say thank you. Um, I haven't had that opportunity to say that to a lot of people lately, because when you're at your lowest, people tend to um, not pay you much attention because they say, well, uh, uh, it's an old saying that was said to me, uh, you made your own, your bed, you had to lie in it. Um, but with John, he's different. He's, he's the type of person that reach out, reaches out to you and he wants to truly, from his heart, want to help you get through your situation. And uh, by being my case manager and everything and, and keeping me in the, going the right direction. Um, it's just the words I cannot, I, I cannot even say, uh, except for just thank you. And, uh, and if anybody do des deserve this award, he, he should be one of the top candidates for it, in my opinion. I met her almost two years ago. Okay. Um, in life, I was in a dark spot. Okay. Um, and I had just barely moved there, maybe a couple months. Um, I had a lot of altercations. Okay. Um, but Toinette was there pretty much to coach me through everything and tell me that everything will be okay. I'm a single mom, and because of my anxiety and depression and PTSD and other things, um, I doubt being a good mom. And she's always told me, I can do it, just breathe. Um, take your time, just sit down. If you need help, you know, you have your support system, so call them. So I feel sometimes um, if it wasn't for her saying it, there would be no telling 
um, what I would possibly have done to myself. Um, never wanted to harm my child. It was just, I can't do this. I, I want to give up, and she'll talk me through it. She's been she's been a big motivator, pretty much, right. like my mom. <laughs> okay. Okay. Toinette, um, if it wasn't for you, I probably wouldn't be sitting here today doing this for you. Um, I appreciate you being like that mom I've never had and encouraging me and pushing me to do better in life and believing in me when I didn't believe in myself. And thank you for all the time that you had the patience to deal with my outburst and when I had my, my downs. And also thank you for being there when I had my ups and joking with me and having a sense of humor and understanding me as a person. Um, it really, really means a lot, and I don't express it enough, so thank you. Let me see. So I was homeless for okay. uh, from 15 okay. up until 21. She has helped me with a lot. Um, well, coming into the program, I really didn't know anything um, about being an adult, about just really anything. Uh -huh. So, um, like, going to her, asking her questions, like, she didn't ever, like, make me feel, you know, judged or anything for not knowing the things. Like, she, she always just, you know, answered them, like, they were there, like, this was the first time she's, you know, ever answering this question or something, you know, just making, like, really made me feel comfortable with coming to her with even the things that I felt. Her being consistent helped me to be consistent, like, her helping me, like, hey, like, did you get this done? Did you get this done? And she also taught me, like, that, you know, my voice is important, so, like, so, like, I should speak up, that I should speak up, because, like, um, i Sometimes I won't speak up and okay. I just like, you know, like go with the flow. And so like, um, yeah, I'm still learning not to go with the flow and to like okay. speak up for myself. So yeah. She's she's really supportive. Like, okay. you know, um, she's really supportive. You can talk to her, you know, um, um, just her personality like is very welcoming. So like you feel comfortable. Um, thank you for teaching me consistency. Thank you for the person you are. Thank you for being you. Like one thing I really admire, I really admire about you is um, you never like treated me like a kid. Like you never um, treated me like I didn't know or like I was supposed to know something. You never judged me. So thank you. Uh, my homelessness started, sir, back in 05 when, when I came here to Dallas. And, you know, my way of life, uh, uh, it wasn't nothing left, left back at home for me, you know, to, to offer me. They, they had moved the GM plant to, to Mexico. So, uh, you know, uh, only thing I could see myself going was either going to jail or, 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 or dying, you know. And so, so I, I had to find a new way of life, you know, by moving to a bigger city that could offer me a better chance of living. I met with Logan when I came, came, out, came out to Halfway House and, and moved back to Austin Street. Uh, Mr. Logan, I didn't know him at first, but I had to find out who, who was my VA representative. Okay. And you know, though, by me going forward that way, trying to find out some things that I need to do to, to help get a homeless veteran off the street, the first time I met him, uh, uh, we, we, for some reason, we got off on the wrong foot. It, 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 and now that we look back at it, both of us smiles now. <laughs> it, it, it made us come closer, Clo closer, yeah, yeah. So, you know, we, we had to put that behind us and, 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 and wash that away. And, and, and it worked out, worked out wonderful. It's, it's awesome now. Me, me, and Mr., me and Mr. Logan are so close now. We feel like we uh, 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 the best of friends, uh, 
a brother from another mother. Okay. And, 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 and he's an awesome guy, man. I, I mean, he's, he, he really bends over backwards to help you and work with you. Because cause the thing, thing that me and him went to, went through together while I was going to SOP, IOP class at the Salvation Army, the, you know, I, I was coming in like late at night from class, like, like Monday nights and Thursday, coming in from class. And Mr. Logan said, Mr. Junior, so, uh, are you having any problems with class? I, I said, yes, sir, because I'm trying to get back to my bed and they won't let me come in after class. He, he said, oh, oh, I can, I can help you with that. I said, sir, I, I, I'll be glad if you can find some way to help me get back into my bed. Because, you know, I, I got to do this class, to, you know, it's by the court order. By the court order, if, if I don't do it, I'll go back to jail. Yeah. And man, man, this, sir, this man actually been old backwards to help me, man. And he didn't even know me. He didn't even know me, sir. And I was so proud and so happy of him. You know, it, 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 it changed my heart because I asked, asked my high power to forgive me, you know, while I was locked up. And, you know, the, my old addiction and habits are, are all gone, sir. They're all gone. And, and, and I, I feel so wonderful and good now, you know, that I'm living a new life now. Okay, okay. Okay, no. First of all, Mr. Logan Ferguson is a gentleman of scholar. Uh, I look up to him with the highest respect. Uh, uh, you know, uh, where I come from, uh, he have no, no idea of, 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 of the things that we go to, you know, in our past, in our neighborhoods. And you know, that's something that, that he wants to learn about, you know. He, he want to know what's going on and people mind it. I'm very honored to know Mr. Logan. We, we have been through, through some rough stuff together. Uh, He's trying to help me get housing and situation. Uh, by me and, him, me and him working together on this task or this project, it's, it's awesome right now, because cause I, I, feel, I feel more at Eve with where I'm at, even though it's just a one bedroom apartment with, with a nice bath, nice uh, uh, bathroom. I love it. I love it to the utmost, utmost spec. And I'm glad, glad he called the gentleman and told him my situation and helped me get in it. So I really want to thank him for it. Uh, whatever award you know, he's up for entitlement, it, it's an honor to stay here and speak on his behalf. And I thank you so much. Thank you so much. I, thank you so much. Very highly, I thank you. Okay, so before I met him, I was at the Family Gateway Center here downtown okay. for seven months. Okay. Um, and then he became my case manager when I got my apartment. So he's been my case manager for three years. Okay. Uh, and um, I've gone out of my way. I never do that. I'm not the type that goes out of my way to go and tell somebody else on top of him. He's such a good... But with him, I just had to because... It's been three years. He never lost his profession. Always Mr. Tamez, Mr. Tamez, Mr. Tamez. And I started calling him Javar, you know. I, <laughs> so he never lost his professionalism up to this day. He just goes above and beyond. I think that he really loves his job. <laughs> I think, and I know that he had, at some time, he had another job, uh, like a part-time. But I just know that this was like his main passion job. So um, he's just been the best ca case manager that I've had. Whatever he needed to do, game night for the kids, Halloween costumes, he's always very on point. Like um, for the kids to have um, Christmas, my kids have Christmas, my kids have Halloween, because he's right there for costumes, uh, school supply, everything. He's Like this year I didn't have to buy nothing, but I, I was right on point with everything wherever he had. He's like, you have to go downtown to this place, you gotta go here, you gotta go there. So he'll give us the means, it's up to you if you're gonna do it or not. So he's just, he gets us prepared. So it's up to you if you're not prepared and you fell, that's your fault. Cause he did his part months in advance, months in advance. He's letting you know what's gonna happen. He's a right on point with everything. So Mr. Bradley, I'm gonna say, um, you never ever have left me and my family down. Um, I believe that you, ex you uh, deserve this and much more. I'm really rooting for you to get number one and get this award because you deserve this and more. And to me and my family, you've been a big blessing since we met you. Thank you very much for being a good case manager. I met her in 2016 of March. That's when I moved from one property to another property.
She's just trying to help you get to the next level. Her thing with me, she was like, well, where do you want to see yourself in the next five years? And I would tell her because um, as a victim of rape, I was down for seven years. I was on a lot of medication. I, I was still healing from some of my injuries. But I, you know, I gave her the insight of that, and they caught my um, attacker and everything. And and I, I still do motivation speakers for some women, and she was like, really? You know, she said most women don't like to share their story, but... I do because it can help. And Rikaya was just a person that, you know, she, she's very open minded. She she never judged us. You know, she, she when she gets to know you, she first when she came to me, she asked me what I like, what I didn't like. And I was very open and honest with her. So whenever she had a visit with me, I didn't have no problem or allowing her to come in and do her job. I, I talked to her about a lot of things that I was dealing with. Okay. Um, she was just like another counselor, just someone you can vent to sometimes when you got something going on and you don't know how about, like, I told her I wanted to go to school and I wanted to get online and put some submit some applications, so she allowed me to use her laptop because at the time I didn't have a laptop. Okay. So I eventually I invested into a tablet and then I got a laptop. So with that being said, she, I mean, she's very motivating and she's very encouraging, you know what I'm saying? She's very positive. And um, you can learn a lot from a person, even though I'm 54 as of this month and she's 31. She, she really got it going on for her age, you know what I'm saying? She cool. really do, and, and, and she can be a help to a lot of people if you're open-minded to receive it. You have to be open-minded to receive it, you know what I'm saying? You, you can't have that negative energy. and She could be funny, she could be humorous. Okay. She has um, a lot of wisdom. Like I said, for a young lady, she has a lot of wisdom. Rikaya, this is a message to you. I pray that God will keep continuing using you and you go to other levels to help others as you did to me. And I'm quite sure you'll be a great success in anything that you proceed in life. And I'm going to always love you and you always have a place in my heart because I truly miss you. And I wish I could see you each and every other two weeks as we used to. And I hope they bring you back. <laughs> and good luck on your new journey and your reward. You deserve it. Thumbs up. But being sober is just different. Like, I was suicidal when I came to the bridge. I came from C Center in, in Plano. Okay. And they just dropped me off at that place. I was scared to death. I didn't know what was going on. He made it a lot better. You know, it was, you know, he was always, like, if I wanted a late pass, I, I donated plasma to get money. Mm -hmm. And if I needed a late pass, I would always, he would always be able to get one, you know. Right. We had, like, a trust, you know. Right. You know, when somebody said they were going to do something, mm -hmm. they would get it done. And that, that's really important, you know, to me. Because right. so many people will tell you they're going to do something, and, and, you know, once that mood is gone, you know, then they have all, especially, like, have you ever had, asked anyone to help you move? Oh, yeah, we'll help you and then on moving day. <laughs> yes, uh, thank you for calling. Um, leave a message, and we'll get right back to you, you know. I never felt that way with, you know. And, and he, if I leave a message, he calls back. Which is, which is cool. I mean, a, a lot of this is his job, but I, I, you know, what I think that's not as much as the job is the caring, you know? I mean, you can still do your job, but you, you can do it in a, like a robot, and I never felt that way with him. You know, he gives eye contact, he, he remembers things, you know, those are important to me. Absolutely. You know, because you, you, when, you, when you're on the street, you don't really trust people too much, you know, and, and you can tell when they're, you know, talking down to you or not, and I never felt that way. It was pretty cool, because like when I first came, I didn't have anybody, so it was just I, you know, and like mm -hmm. one of the statements that I guess I could say about James would be, you know, like illness is I-L-L-N-E-S-S, -L -L -E you know, and, and that if you take the I out of illness and you replace it with we, you get wellness. That's great. So That's there was kind of a wellness going on then, That's you know. Fantastic. I didn't feel like I was alone anymore. Always willing to listen, you know, uh, not judgmental, you know, it, it's just he would listen, hear me out, ask me questions, and then make suggestions. Instead of interrupting me and then forcing will on me, you know, he would listen to me thoroughly, which is important to me. Hey, James, uh, when I first, when we first started working together, I was pretty messed up. You know, I had a lot of different things to do. I had tickets and, I, you know, my sobriety was new. Uh, I was scared, you know, I wanted to get upstairs, and all that stuff worked out, you know. I, I'm really thankful that you were there for me, and I'm thankful that, you know, 
you were my case manager. You did a really good job, you know, and, and it's, it's taken root, you know. You planted some seeds that are starting to grow in my life, and I really feel thankful for that. And I'm, I'm glad that you were there with me, you know. I, I didn't know what my life was going to be like, you know. I mean, you make so many bad decisions over and over again, it becomes habit. And because of you, you started making me see the good decisions, and I appreciate that. Thanks. It's important for me to look forward to doing things, being homeless, uh, being a street vendor and street artisan uh, for 35 years. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm 50 now, so it's okay. been a while. And um, it's nice to be able to see that there are advocates out there to help you keep you focused. Great. You know, um, I think uh, people overlook how important it is to be able to see someone once a week do it for a check-in and be uh -huh. like, and then keep you focused, you know, like sure. friendly face, sure. it's always really helpful. Sure. With going through my storage unit uh, with all my merchandise, mm -hmm. there was a group of very important papers that I came across. Okay. Uh, my Native American uh, documentation, tribal papers. And those are the kind of uh, documentation you want to keep with you and not throw out while you're homeless. <laughs> and so um, immediately, Lacey, without skipping a beat, offered to put it in a, um, a bank vault, like, oh, right. you know, okay. for paperwork at the stew pot. Cool. I now feel like I can actually go inside. Good. But Lacey helped to make all that come together. Cool. As an advocate, Very cool. yes, okay. yes. Actually, now um, I'm going back to school again to get recertified in the health industry. Um, I was a certified nursing assistant a long time ago, and worked with quad and paraplegics, and then um, and I feel like I can um, go back into that field again because of Lacey. We like to joke. Okay and laugh as we get through, as some ways to get through a very stressful day. Uh-huh, sure. Um, but she's able to bring levity okay. to the table. So okay. she sees that I'm having a stressed out day. Uh -huh. She's able to bring that warmth and that assuredness okay. back around okay. to smile, you know? Okay. So yeah, it's remarkable. And then we're smiling and we're laughing. And then I leave feeling better than I when I got there. <laughs> so, Good. yeah. Lacey, the things that you've done for me are, I, you can't put a price tag on it and it's priceless. Um, helping me keep, remain focused to get on with my life has been an adventure. And sharing this adventure with you has been completely, um, one of those situations that you just don't ever forget. And I want to say thank you so much for the time that you devote to this uh, community and being as civic-minded and driven as you are. Thank you so much, Lacey. Thank you. I met Ms. Sharon in 2011 um, okay. at ABC Behavior on okay. Samuel. I was in the Step Up program okay. and they, I switched over, and she became my case manager. Well, she told me the rules, okay. <laughs> the do's and the don'ts, okay, and uh, that she would work for her client. She's there for us, okay. and uh, she's very compassionate. Okay. When I was transferred to the, the program, right. um, uh, she said that uh, all I want you to do is make sure you share your face the next day. She said, if you can get through that, I got you. You know, yeah. I, you know, so um, I was persistent and I was making sure that I'd done everything I was supposed to do and make uh -huh. sure, and you should have saw me, I was just rushing, I couldn't wait for the next day to see okay. her. So when I stuck my head in the door, she'd say, you know. So that gave me the strength that I needed. Okay. I'm proud of that, I, uh, I've been there a year, okay. and uh, out of the year, it's been the best time of my life. Um, just, it's been a blessing to my life. Okay. Because uh, today I'm in school, I've accomplished that, and um, continue to do better from there.
She's very compassionate, and, and she's, uh, she's encouraging me to keep going no matter what, you know, to, to keep my faith and keep pressing forward. Okay, hi, Ms. Sharon. I just wanted to say thank you for your compassion and your, com uh, uh, your strength in pushing me forward, and uh, thank you so much.